No, the eagle is always been associated with Esau Edom. If you look at Lamentations chapter four, verse uh, nineteen, it talks about the uh, persecutors are swifter than the eagle, and then it talks about the daughter of Edom in verse twenty. Uh, in verse 21, Lamentation chapter 4, then you got uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 49 talks about the the uh, enslavers of Israel would be swifter than the eagle of heaven. Then you got um, in Job 9 and 24, 25 and 26 talking about the eagle a swift eagle and so all of these point to the nation of Edom so when you go to when you go to Genesis 27 verse 40 it tells you that Esau will have a rulership. It says, And by the, thy sword thou shalt live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when you shall have the dominion or the rulership, that you shall break, that you shall break his yoke from off thy neck. So it's talking about Jacob uh, would rule for a period of time, but Esau would break the yoke off of his neck, and then Esau would have the rulership. And so, this is what we are seeing with the nation of Edom. And it proves that the so-called white man is the nation of Edom. Now, when you go to Obadiah, it says that Edom exalted itself like the eagle. When you go to Habakkuk, it tells you that that Edom uh, gathers all nations to himself. And this is what the Greeks did. When you look at the Maccabees chapter 1, it says that Antiochus told his king, everybody in his kingdom that they should be one people and leave their laws. See, this is how the Edomites operate. Okay. Let me go to that Job. That I quoted Job 9 and 24. Now, Job was living in the land of Uz when Amos chapter, I mean, Lamentations chapter 4, it talked about the swift eagle. The persecutors are swifter than an eagle to Israel which was the, the nation of Edom. So here it says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. See, that's talking about the Edomites, the children of Edom. They, the earth, they was given rulership. And here in 26, it says, they passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hastened to the prey. See, this is how Edom is characterized. So, when you go into, let's see here. I had one, I'm thinking, was it Ezekiel 17? It talks about them in Ezekiel 17. It said, um, uh, it's a parable or in, in, in a riddle. Verse 3 and say, Thus says the Lord, a great eagle with great wings, long winded, filled with feathers, uh, which had diverse colors, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. This talking about that it came to the Israelites. That's what the Lebanon. Is characterized even in uh, Ezekiel chapter 31. It took in the, the chosen nation. 
uh, it said in verse 4, he cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into the land of traffic or the land of merchandise. They, that's what they selling the Israelites. He said it in a city of merchants. See, this is where the, the Edomites was selling the Israelites. Okay? That's why Joel chapter uh, 3, it says that the, the nation of Judah and uh, Jerusalem was, was sold for wine and they cast lots for the uh, the Israelites and sold a boy for a harlot. See, this is going back to Edom, the eagle. So you get uh, Second Elders eleven, and it tells you about this eagle. Moreover, I behold, beheld, and lo, the eagle flew with his feathers and rained upon the earth over them that dwell therein. See, this is what who is the rulers, the Greek rulership. And the so-called Roman rulership, and uh, the, the the British and the American rulership, and so in Daniel, it talks about this fourth beast that ruled, and here we see that the fourth beast, the last ruling beast. Is this eagle? They say the eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of the of thy brother Daniel. So this is Ezra's expanding on who this beast is in Revelation. I mean, in uh, Daniel chapter seven, who would have the children of Israel in captivity and make war with her. But they would prevail uh, once the Most High step in and give them the judgment. And that's Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. But And this goes back to Revelation uh, chapter 12 where it talks about um, this great red dragon with ten horns. Let me go to Daniel and, and let's, let's link these things up. Okay, Daniel, it says, okay, four kings, the great beast, verse 20, it says, and the ten horns that were in his head, and the other which came up, and before them three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth to speak very great things, who looked was more stout, than his fellows. You see. Because uh, Babylon the Great. Is greater than all the kingdoms. That Esau ever had. But you see the. Ten horns. Let's look at the ten horns. You go to Revelation. You get the ten horns. Uh, Revelation chapter 12. And the ten horns. It says in verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Edom means red, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. So this horn go back to Edom. Then look at uh, Zechariah chapter 1. It says, uh, it says, I'm going to read verse 19. And I saw, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And see, that's what the Edomites did. They had the Israelites in the captivity and sold them. And so that's how we identify these Edomites. With a currency, uh, Salak. Put their own currency. Everything they 
do. They have the Eagle. They have um, the Eagle in Germany, France, Russia, the UK, um, anywhere that these Edomites go, they put a statue up of these Eagles and give you a picture of these Eagles. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kakadash. The bond to the elders pushing the truth. Peace to the elect worldwide. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.